In today's video, we are going to be comparing two Geekum mini PCs that are very similar prices. And one is an Intel unit, which is called the Geekum IT12, and it features the Intel i7-1280p processor and Intel Iris graphics, the XE units. Now, the other PC that we have here is the AMD. This is the A8 unit, and it's got the Ryzen 7 8745HS CPU, and it's also got the Mobile 780M graphics. And spoiler alert, there is actually a big difference between these two little units here when it comes to at least gaming performance. But when it comes to the price, it's not such a big difference. In fact, one of these PCs could get you flying right off of Dirty Boulevard. So let's go fly away, fly, fly away. And let's start some benchmarks here where the first thing we are going to look at is the trusty old Cinebench R23. We've got a multi-core score as well as a single core score here. And what we're seeing is the Ryzen 7, the AMD unit, the Geekum A8, is performing a bit better here in the multi-core especially, scoring around 15,000 points to the Intel units, the i7-1280Ps. 9,700-ish points. Now, when we look at the single core performance, they're pretty similar, in fact, when it comes to the single core boost speeds, as well as the points, both scoring around 1,700 points on that single core score. Now, before we continue on with the benchmarks, I also point out today's video is sponsored by Geekum. They really enjoyed the previous video we did for them where we ran over one of their mini PCs with my own car and it was absolutely fine. Now in today's video, I did also quickly test the durability of both these units with a different kind of test. I just pretty much started jumping on both the units and stomping them and they were both okay. They still work and the chassis are actually built very strong. So if you're looking at that previous unit, I think it was the IT15, and you're wondering if they carry the same strength across to their cheaper models, they do indeed do that. Now, in terms of the big one, the gaming performance, let's get onto that straight away because this is where I was playing some Counter-Strike 2 quickly, just at 1080p, low settings, just to check the differential here in the FPS. And here's where I was pretty shocked to see that the Geekum A8 unit, the Ryzen unit, that's the 780M graphics, that was scoring around 120 average FPS. It was actually a pretty smooth experience but then we went to the Intel unit on the same map, same 1080p low settings, full screen resolution. This is where the XE unit was doing under half the average FPS, scoring around 50 average there. And the 0.1% lows on both examples were actually around uh, 30 here. But one thing that's important about Counter-Strike is because the server tick rate is actually pretty high. I believe it's one of, if not the highest for a game on the internet, that's the FPS that gets actually recorded and sent to the server as registered data. Essentially, if your FPS is under that tick rate, you can be coming into things like bullet registry problems where your bullets are just not registering. You feel like you're firing at someone and you're just like, hey, the bullets aren't hitting. That's because you're actually not even sending enough data to the server to register that. So pretty important difference there, especially at this kind of level where it comes to 1080p sort of low settings gaming. The Ryzen unit is going to do a much better job. And then when I did some other benchmarks here, and we'll get these out of the way with because they are pretty important. I'm guessing a lot of you guys, if you're looking for a mini PC, especially for gaming and a bit of hard work, this is where it's gonna make a difference. And here's where we load up Geekbench 6. And we did the graphics test here. And this was mirroring the CS2 results here with a big win for the AMD Ryzen unit scoring around 30,000 points versus a bit over 13,000 points on the IT12, the Intel unit. And then when it came to the multi-core performance scores here on the CPU side of things, here's where we scored a modest 2,459 points on the Ryzen unit for single core and 12,700 points on the multi-core score. Then for the Intel, it scored 2,469 points. So very similar single core performance, but then for the multi-core performance, falling a little bit behind there at 9,645 points. Now do keep in mind, all tests here were done at 25C ambient. And when we did test both these units out, the Intel unit was hitting around 77 degrees in Cinebench and the A8 unit, the Ryzen unit, was going to 90 degrees, and the noise profiles on these units were very similar. I'll let you guys take a quick listen to both these units 
and how they sound on full ball. But when it comes to idle, of course, they just whisper quiet. This is as loud as the key commuter will get on full load. And it, this is me whispering from about the same distance as the Mini IT12 at full ball. Here's the AMD unit. This is the AMD unit running at full ball. I'm talking the same distance away from the unit, which is about 20 centimeters. Now the final thing to go over with both these units is the power consumption. And here's where the Intel unit scores a nominal victory, but it does, I believe, score an efficiency loss here, especially when we look at the gaming performance. And this is when we were gaming in CS2, for example, the AMD unit was using around 72 watts and the Intel unit was a just shy of 50 watts at 49 watts. However, if we relate that to the FPS, we can clearly see that the AMD 780M with its CPU combo, with the Ryzen 7 combo is doing a better job of giving you more FPS for the watts consumed. Now, when it comes to the Cinebench results, the AMD unit, again, scoring about 50% more performance, but then the efficiency here is very similar where the unit is going up into the 70 watt region, as opposed to the Intel unit that's sitting around 42 watts when we're testing it out on Cinebench. Then when we did the final test here for Fermark, we're just doing a strenuous GPU test where the FPS was about 19 on Fermark for the Intel unit, then it was hovering around 30 for the AMD unit at 1080p regular settings for Fermark. But then when we look at the power consumption, it was a pretty similar story with the AMD unit scoring around 70 watts and then the Intel unit scoring around 47 watts. So pretty similar efficiency for things like Cinebench and also some generic benchmarks. But when it comes to gaming, which if you want a gaming mini PC, then the Ryzen unit is going to give you not only more FPS, but it will give you better efficiency for gaming too. The last thing I decided to test out here today with these units, since they are both pretty capable, was I decided to test out the audio performance from the four pole. Now you can of course split it into two, three poles. And this is what I did to get the performance figures here today for you guys. And also the crosstalk levels are pretty decent too. So they haven't skimped out on the audio. And what this means is if you're using something on a budget, like for instance, maybe personally, I'm using a Fozy Audio BT20A to amp my speakers. And then I've got an active sub attached to that. It just gives you out such a good value for money audio option. And then you can combine that with a unit like this if you wanna make a media server and also have it putting out decent audio on the side. So no huge difference here on the audio between both these units, but maybe you wanna know before I get on out of here, the differences in these two units on the physical attributes. And looking at the AMD A8, it's a little bit smaller than the IT12 but it carries pretty much the same ports all around, two USB type C's. However, the Intel does carry 240 gigabits per second ports, as opposed to the AMD, it's got 140 gigabits per second port and 110 gigabits per second port. However, all these type C's are capable of display out. And then on the back, you've got additional two type A's, as well as two HDMI outs and an RJ45 in, and they both accept a 19 volt DC in power supply. The Intel does have a Kensington lock, the AMD doesn't. And then on the front, you've got two type A's on both these units, the four pole audio hybrids and the power buttons on both. And then on the other side, you've got the SD ins. And with all that out of the way, it's time to give you guys a straight clean cut conclusion here with both these units. And for me personally, I would pick the A8, the Ryzen unit, because it's just giving out way better gaming performance. And it's also giving out better performance just in all the tests in general. And the efficiency can either be very similar or better in the case of gaming. Now, one thing I forgot to talk about was the idle power consumption. Here's where both these units are very similar. The A8 was, that's the Ryzen unit, that was idling ever so slightly lower. But in the grand scheme of things, they're both going to be absolutely fine for leaving on 24 seven and not having to worry about your power bill going crazy in terms of costs. But picking a winner here, the Ryzen unit definitely scores the win. But of course, if you need the Intel unit for particular tasks, especially the Intel graphics, which it does have more support in uh, terms of different programs, then that may be a deciding factor too. But ultimately both these units can be had for around 
900 Aussie dollars at this point in time. I believe the Intel unit does have a sale on at the moment, make it 10% cheaper in Oz. So it comes down to like around 800 Aussie dollars. I'll put some links in the description below. Anyhow, if you wanna check out these units, and then of course, if you're in the US, or if you're looking at USD pricing as a reference, they're coming in from around 500 to 550 USD for either of these units. So my pick personally is the Ryzen A8, just looking at the performance here. And also lastly, a big thanks to RobTech for lending me out this unit. And also a big thanks to Geekum for sponsoring out today's video and sending me out the IT12. And with that all out of the way, I am going to fly away. Wait, I meant to say peace out for now, bye. But I'm still gonna fly away. Fly, fly away.